Hello guys, and welcome to part 4 in making an online Pokemon game. In this video, we're going to be making player movement. So right now, the player, as you see down here, he's just moving downwards without me doing anything, without me pressing any buttons. So we want to make it so that when I press WASD, we can control him. So if we come to our files, and I'm just going to open up public, go under source, which is where we have all our scripts, in entities we have this player which is what I have open right now and so right now we have a step event that just increases the Y by 2 every step so we, that's the reason he's moving down all the time so if I just get rid of that he's just going to stand still so that's a good start so the next thing we want is we want to give the player a new property and this is going to be the like a controller object so a way for us to have movement in the player so I'll just add this property. So I'm going to click properties and I'll create a new file. And we'll call it user movement.js. And anytime you add in a new file, you have to go to this index.html file and import it. So I'll just click, I'll just add it in up here. So copy and paste this line just so that all the properties stay together. So properties, user movement, save that. Okay. And now this is going to be a class user movement and I need the constructor and so what is what's going to go in this these parameters so if you remember from I think it was the first or second video I'm pretty sure the first I said every single every single property needs a reference to itself or a reference to the entity that's calling it so we'll add that so we'll call it parent and I'll say this dot parent equals parent okay but what else will this need this is going to need two other things a position and and I actually don't remember the second one right now so we'll get back to that we'll say this dot position equals position so that we save it and now we can create this in the player object this dot we'll call it controller equals a new user movement and it takes in a this and a this dot position. And I just remembered what that second property is. It's the image. But we'll add that later. So this dot position. And now we need to add this to the list of our properties. This dot controller. Okay. We could do something now and say this dot, or not this dot, um, step. We'll add a step event or step function, I guess. And we'll say this dot position dot x plus plus just for a test. So now we are always moving to the right. It's kind of like what we had before, except now it's being controlled inside of the user movement property. So in this step event is where we're going to do all of the calculations, I guess, for the for the movement. But first, the third thing I said we needed was image. This dot image equals image. And this is just so that we're just going to give a reference to this so that the user movement is able to also control the animations. This dot image. Okay. So that's done. So I'm going to make a simple movement system. And then we'll remove the whole system and make a new one. And the reason is just I want to show you how how it kind of works. So, and I won't even do that much for the first one. I'm just going to say if, and there's this, func this function that lets us check if a key is being pressed. And that's what we need to do. So if, I believe it's called key is down, and then we need to give it an ASCII character. So if you don't know what ASCII is, I have it open up here. There's an ASCII chart. And if that's hard to see, I have uh, I have it open here, which I can show you bigger. And it's just a bunch of keys or letters, I guess you could say, or characters. And they all have a number associated with them. So over here, there's the letter A, and it's associated with the number 65. And so that number 65 is what we put in if we want to check if the A key is being pressed. So what do we want to do if A is down? We want to say this dot position dot 
it would be x minus equals, we'll say, 16. And actually, I'm going to give this a speed. This dot speed equals 4. So instead, we'll decrease it by this dot speed, just so we have something more consistent. Okay, so now this is a. Let's do w. w is, actually w is not on here. So this isn't a full list, this specific image, which I'm not sure why. So I'm just going to close that. And I can click here, and there's these other ones. You just type in ASCII chart, and you can see them. So this first one works. I can try and zoom in a little more. So there's W right here, which is number 87. It's this chart, it's under DEC for decimal, I believe. So we want W87. I want to put this one up here, 87. And here we want the Y decrease by speed. And now we want WAS. So S is 83. Whoops, 83, and we want the Y to increase, and then D. D is associated with the number 68. So we'll just type in 68 and say the Y, or not the Y, the X increases by speed. Okay, so if I refresh now, so we're still moving to the right constantly. That's because we accidentally left this line of code in. I'll just remove that. Okay. Now if I press W, A, S, or D, I start moving. Okay, so now I want to be able to turn and all that. But I'm not going to add that in now because, like I said, we're going to be removing this movement system. But if I wanted to, like, turn to the right, I would say this dot image dot, I believe it was set, set X. And I'm going to set it to, let me just open up resources, boy, run. Which row do I want? Right is this second row here. So this is row zero, this is row one, and this is row two. So I want to set it to row two. So if I want to be turning right, I'd say that. And that's surprisingly not working. This dot image dot set x two. Oh, that should have been set. Whoops, set y. Sorry. Okay, there we go. Now we're facing to the right. Now, let's make a better movement because we want Pokemon movement. And if we're looking at something like this, this doesn't look like Pokemon movement at all. We want to be able to move to the right one, like 32 pixels, move up 32 pixels, and so on. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, first we need to make a target. So where do we want to be going? And for right now, we'll say this dot target equals a new object, JavaScript object. And we'll say x this dot position dot x, and then y this dot position dot y. So right now, our target is just wherever we are standing. Next, I want to say this dot moving equals false. So right now, we are not moving. And now we're going to use those here. So I'm gonna comment these out for a second. I'm gonna say if key is down. Now I don't really want to say it's 87 because 87 just sounds it just doesn't make sense if you're just looking at this. So we'll make a variable called this dot keys and we'll set it to an object. We'll say w is associated with 87. A is associated with 65. S is associated with 83, and finally D, 68. Okay, so now even though it's a little more to type, it looks better. So this.keys.w. And then I'll say if it's if that's down and we're not moving and not this.moving, so we're checking to make sure that we're not moving and that this key is down. This dot target dot y equals well minus equals and we want to say this dot speed no minus equals 32 sorry and now i'm going to say also i want to say this dot moving equals true okay if key is down 
actually, you know what? I'll just copy and paste this. One, two, we only need it four times. Well, before we do that, I think there's a few more things we need to add, which I should add before I copy and paste probably. Like setting the direction. This so to set the direction, this dot set y. No, no, this dot image dot set y. In order to want to set it to for the w that's moving upward. So we want to set it to three, row three. Okay, now I think I can copy it. There might be something I'm missing, but this should be good for now. I guess I'll just add it. If I'm missing something, I'll add it in to all of them. It's not. It's only four, so it shouldn't be that hard. Okay, so a we want to set our x to minus thirty-two. S is down, so we want to add thirty-two to the y. D is right, so I want to add thirty-two to the x. And a is left, so we want to set our image to be left, which is row two. Set y to two. S is down, so that's row zero. And the last one is D, which is right. That's that's row two. I'm sorry to use row two. Yeah, I think this should have been one. That should have been one, yeah. Yeah, row one. Sorry, I forgot. It starts off with row zero, and then one, then two, then three. Okay. So if we run this now, we're going to get a problem. If I turn right, I can't turn anywhere else anymore. And I don't move. I just turn to the direction. So I can, like, turn to the left, but then I can't turn anywhere else. That's because we're setting moving to true, but then never setting it back to false or moving in general. So if this dot moving, so if we're moving, what do we want to do? First, we want to calculate a couple things. First, we want to say var distance x. So how far away are we from our current x position? So, or from the target x position, I should say. So I believe this is going to be this dot position dot x minus this dot target dot x. No, those, I think that's backwards. Position dot x, and this one should be target x. Okay, I'm going to copy and paste that, and do the same thing for the y. So calculate the distance for the y. And now I want to say var dx, and this is delta x, how much do we want to move in which direction? So I'm going to say it's going to be the sine, sorry, math dot sine of that distance x times this dot speed. And do the same thing for delta y, math dot sine distance y times this dot speed. Okay. Now we need to make a check. We need to check to see if we are close enough to our target if we're if we're essentially on the target if we reach the target then we want to do something but if not we want to move so here we're going to say if distance from x is less than or equal to this dot speed and distance y is less than or equal to this dot speed and i i'm missing something this should also have math dot ABS for absolute value, just so it's always positive. Same here. So this is just checking to make sure that we're, if we're close to the target. And if we're close to the target, we'll say this dot position dot x equals this dot target dot x, whoops. And then this dot position dot y equals this dot target dot y. And then while we're at it, we'll say this dot moving equals false. However, if we're not close to the target, we're going to say this dot position dot x plus equals delta x and this dot position dot y plus equals delta y. Okay, if I refresh this, did it work? Okay, yeah, it's working now. So if I press the right, I move up, down, left, and right, and it's working. However, I'm not animating, so that's what we'll do next. So we'll animate if we're moving. 
So this right here is saying if we're moving essentially. So this dot image dot animate x. Okay, I think that's right. Animate. Just want to make sure it's spelled right. And then if we're not moving, I'm just going to reset the animation by saying this dot image dot set x to zero. And that'll just reset the animation back to frame zero. And there we go. Now we are done. So there's a couple, but there's a, there is one last problem and it's kind of hard to tell, but right now we are not aligned properly with the, with the um, plants or with the cells at all. We're like offset a little bit. And that's because when we create the player, we just arbitrarily gave it a position of 300 to 300, which is not aligned with any um, cells. So what we could do is we could just change these to a number that is aligned with 32, but I'm going to just save myself just in case I do something wrong ever again. And I'm going to say this dot position dot X equals this dot position dot X minus this dot position dot X module 32. And you've seen this formula, you use this formula a couple times. This just aligns everything with the grid. So now if I run it, we are aligned with the grid, but it still looks like it's off. And this is for a different reason. It's because the sprite for the player, if we go to it, or if, wherever I have it, let me, so I'm gonna go to my desktop and I'll just find my files, public resources, where we have boy run. So if I go to properties, details, the height of this is 192 pixels. And 192 divided by four, because it's four tall, is 48, not 32. So it's 16 pixels off from what it should be. And so that's not too hard to fix. There's a, I have something inside of the position class, the position property, which is an offset, an offset X and an offset Y. And all you have to do is say, add in two new parameters, zero, negative 16. And the negative 16, so this is the X offset and the Y offset. The way I got negative 16 is because if each of these character cells is 48, then 48 minus 32, or sorry, the reverse, 38, 32 minus 48 is negative 16. Okay. Now if I refresh it, now we are aligned with the cells. And if we come over the tree, it works. So the next thing I want to do is what we're going to be doing next time is making it so that we can use multiple players. So if this would just not full screen, if I have two people on right now, you don't see either of them, but this is supposed to be an online Pokemon game. So next time we're going to be dealing with adding in players, which means we're going to be going back to this server script and editing this core script and adding more to it. But that's it for this video. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, see ya.